Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. Um, in this episode, I'm answering a question uh, that somebody had about uh, making a a glow effect on. Uh, well, this lady's like pulling this amulet out of box, and it's supposed to be like a magical or possessed um, amulet, and uh, they wanted to make that glow. So we're gonna uh, send this over to uh, After Effects and work on that. First, I, I like to start it out in Premiere just because you can put your edit points in. Because this full clip here is uh, about 40 seconds long, and they don't need the whole clip. They just want. <clears throat> so I, I would recommend just con uh, confining it to the portion of the clip that you need. Like if this is the edit right here, where the edit cuts and then ends. That's the portion I'm going to be sending over to After Effects. So I suggest doing the effect first rather than open up the entire clip in After Effects and just try to do the clip in there. Do the edit first. You know how the edit's going to be and then send it over. So now, right now I'm going to right click on this clip and replace it with an After Effects composition. And I'll send it over to After Effects and I'll ask you what you want to call it. I'm just going to call this Glow. And it will load that in and out point from Premiere inside of After Effects. So now to make this thing glow, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a mask on top of the amulet. Uh, it's going to have to track the amulet as well. And this has a little bit of kind of erratic movement at some points, kind of shakes and stuff. But uh, we're going to try to track this as best possible. We might have to do some manual rotoscoping on it as well. So I'm going to get this clipped right before it gets covered with your hand here, right there. Okay, we're going to start here and I'm going to create a mask on this, on this clip here. Uh, I could duplicate this, by the way. I'm going to duplicate this and just make the mask layer the top one. We can call this uh, amulet. We'll call this one, hit enter or return and type in background or whatever you want to call it just to keep track of our layers there. All right, so the amulet here, I'm going to select the amulet layer. We're going to go up to our pen tool with that layer selected. Very important that you have this selected or it will create a shape instead of a mask. And now I'm going to create a, a spline on this here with my pen tool. I'm going to click, I'm going to go down here and click and drag and make that a curve right there because it's kind of curves. So, and click and drag just a little bit to make a curve. And there we go. So there's our mask. And so what we're cutting out there basically is this. So that's the turn off the bottom layer. It's cut out the, the amulet and put it, paste it on top of the background layer. Now I'm going to see how much this will track. We're going to uh, arrow this down. I'm going to go to masks. I'm guessing that it'll track a little bit, but it'll probably fall, uh, fall off eventually because it gets a little bit more erratic because it's kind of shaking when she first pulls it out. So let's uh, right click on the mask here and say track mask. It'll bring up my mask tracker over here on the side. And you want to make sure that you're doing position scale and rotation because it's changing size. Uh, it's changing position and it's rotating a little bit. So we're going to have it track all those items there. And now I'm going to play backwards because we got it right before it hits our hand. So we're going to have it track backwards. Let's try that out. So far, so good. And right there, it lost a little. It got misshaped a little bit. So I'm going to get to where it kind of loses track here, right about there. And I'm going to uh, select my arrow tool because I want to select all these, all these tracking points here and get rid of them. So I'm going to select all these and get rid of them up to the one that I'm on right now and delete those. And then I'm going to track backwards. I'm going to track backwards one frame at a time and see kind of where this loses track like right about there. So I'm going to zoom up on this. I'm going to hold down option and zoom up and I'm going to start reshaping this mask to kind of fit the amulet a little bit more. And since it's already started keyframing, it's going to it's going to memorize this as a keyframe there. Let's kind of reshape these, get it back to normal. So this will take a little bit of manual doing, but that's what effect work is, is it takes some time to do this stuff. And what I could do here is uh, in these in-between frames here, let's zoom up on this, show you a little tip on uh, on keyframing here. But right there it's off, right here it's on, right there it's off, right there it's off, right there it's off, right, and there it's back on. So I'm going to eliminate those keyframes in between and see if it does the interpolation in between. Uh, so I'm going to go, so I'm going to grab these five keyframes, one, two, three, four, five, delete those and see how it interpolates in between. And that is actually a lot better. And then I can kind of go in and uh, adjust an individual frame there. And adjust these. And this process that we're doing here is called rotoscoping. Get those back on track. There we go. And let's do some more tracking backwards. Let's do one frame at a time and just see how it does here for a little bit. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Reshape that one. See, and if you have some slow, steady movement, this track mask usually works really, really well. But uh, but right now I'm gonna I'm having to do some manual kind of re adjustments here. 
this is still speeding up the process quite a bit here where you don't have to go through and track each individual frame right there it goes way off all right so i'm going to keep doing this until it gets down to the uh until it gets down to the box kind of manually adjusting uh my and by the way let me just quickly show how to adjust these frames or these nodes here uh if you select one node here uh, right now I'm on my arrow tool, not on the pen tool. If you do the pen tool, it will add nodes. So you have to switch over to your arrow. Shortcut is is the letter V as in Victor. We'll choose the arrow. Uh, and when you first select this mask here, it's going to have all the nodes are going to be selected like this. They're going to be all selected. So if you grab this, it's going to move them all at once. So if you want to move these individually, what you do is you click in the middle to deselect them like that. It deselects them. Make sure you're on your arrow key and not your pen tool, by the way, or it will add a node. And if you do that, then just hit Command Z or Control Z and undo, and then hit your arrow and select in the middle. Now it has deselected all these nodes, and you can select them individually like this and adjust them individually. If you want to select all the nodes again, uh, like all of them at once, you hit Command A if you're on a Mac or Control A on a PC and it selects all the nodes. Now they're all selected and they'll all move together. All right, just wanted to uh, state that, but I'm going to get through doing the rest of this keyframing here. And what I suggest is use your tracker here and keep arrowing back one frame at a time until it goes off, since this has got such erratic movement, and then, um, and then go through frame by frame until you get that, oops, uh, and and uh, if you if you're moving through frame by frame, it's page up and page down, page up and page down. We'll move through. Don't use your arrow keys, or it will actually shift your image over uh, by pixel by pixel. All right. So then I'm gonna keep doing this and seeing if it tracks. If it does, cool. I'll just keep on tracking. If not, I'll readjust and see. We've got a little bit of, and then we're gonna be feathering the edge. So this this kind of metal this little framing here is kind of moving down, in in the middle there. We could add a node here. There we go. And I'm going to keep tracking this uh, until I get it down inside the box. So uh, then we'll come back and we'll take a look at it. So, And then another thing that I'm doing in here, if you want to, uh, as you're moving this back and you're tracking your mask like this, um, if you want to, if this thing is moving out of the frame, you can use your mouse and use a middle click. Use your middle click on your mouse and it turns into a hand and you can move your screen around. Do, be careful not to do this with your arrow key because if you grab your if you have just your arrow key and you do it with your mouse like this and you're trying to click and move it's going to move your whole uh, composition there it it moves the, the pixels on screen so the middle click is uh, is is moving your viewable space here uh, and make sure that the hand pops up to do that um, it did go out to full screen again you hit shift question mark and it both goes out to full screen and I'm using option or alt on a PC and using my middle mouse scroll to scroll up. Uh, to where I want it to go. Okay, so I've gotten, I've, I finished uh, tracking this thing. I'm going to show you right here. I tracked, I, I want this uh, amulet to maybe start glowing right when she starts picking it up here. So I didn't do any tracking uh, past this point here. Like right when it starts lifting up is when it's going to start glowing. So I only uh, did the amount of tracking that I need to. And then when she reaches up and grabs it, her hand kind of goes through, um, through the mass there. So that's where I can stop. So what I could what I can do with this top layer here is I can turn on, I can turn on and off this layer on and off at, when the, when the keyframes take over here. Uh, so I'm going to get right on the end keyframe right here, and I'm going to hold Alt or Option and do my right bracket key, and it will set an out point right there. Now that layer turns off after that, and then I'm going to go to the beginning and do the same thing. Get it right here on this frame, on that keyframe, and do Alt left bracket or Option left bracket. Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and uh, do the left bracket, which is just to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. Uh, and now I've got an in point and out point. This turns on right here and turns off right there. So right here as we're playing. And you can see, let's turn off the bottom layer and you'll see that layer turn on. Right there it turns on and there's the track. It's kind of a hard edged uh, mask which we're going to fix. So I'm going to go over to my feather and feather that mask here. Uh, let's option scroll up. And I'm going to uh, turn off my, my wireframe while I've got that selected. So I'm going to go hold down command shift H as in hide, or Control Shift H on a PC, and it will hide the it will hide that um, mask the the spline there. So now I can really see the feather that I'm creating down here without the spline getting in the way. I'm gonna just feather that just slightly, about right there, just to soften up the edge a little bit, and maybe even shrink that in a little bit. So all the colors that we get from the glow is gonna be from the amulet itself. So mask expansion, and I'm gonna drag it to the left and just drag it in a little bit, uh, defeather it just a teeny bit, maybe right about there. So, okay, so that's, that's looking good there. And I can turn on my bottom layer. So basically we have this mask created now with this amulet floating over the top 
of, uh, maybe I expanded that a little too much. Let me go negative, negative two. There we go. Let's see. That's looking better. That's uh, getting all the colors of the amulet there. Okay, so now we're gonna make it glow. So we've done done the hard part. Now uh, the easier part is going to be to go to our effects here. We're gonna go up to our effects and search our effects right here and type in glow. And it will bring up, uh, right there is the glow that we want right here. I'm gonna grab this bottom glow here and drag and drop onto the amulet. And there already it's glowing a little bit. You can see the glow coming out. And we are going to go up and mess with threshold, radius, and intensity. Let's get this down to where we can see it, where it's not against the white shirt there. That, so we can really see what we're doing to the with the effect here. Let's turn that on and off. See, there's the glow that it's adding. It's already starting to glow. Uh, let's turn down. I'm going to turn down the threshold. If you, if you turn on the threshold, it's going to get brighter. Grab the lit radius. It will spread it out and make it uh, glow further outwards. So maybe about right there. And glow intensity is going to make it brighter. So I'm going to mess with these things and, th and get it to where I think it looks pretty good. I like that, like maybe right about there. Turn it on and off. And let's let's watch through this. Hit shift question mark to zoom out and see where we want it. And she picks it up right now. It's just kind of turned on. And right there, it's glowing. Uh, let's feather it out a little further. Soften that effect off a little bit. Turn down the threshold. Now what we can do is we can keyframe these things. We can keyframe either just kind of the general effect. So now she picks it up. Actually, that's looking kind of good there. Start brightening there. And has a little bit of that glow effect as she's picking it up. And we can actually turn it on and off by using maybe even opacity. You can keyframe these individual attributes if you want. I can go down to effects and I can uh, go down to the glow and I can keyframe uh, the threshold uh, radius or intensity, you just have to mess with it. Right now I'm just gonna do a basic like uh, opacity here. So I'm just gonna, on the general layer itself. So I'm gonna just go to the opacity of this layer here under uh, transform and there's my opacity. And I'm gonna turn this, uh, the opacity, I'm gonna have it turned off here at first. So I'm gonna go here and make my opacity zero, which turns it completely off, that layer completely off. And then as we move up, Maybe about right here, we'll have it slowly turn on from, from this point to this point, go to 100%. And now it's at 100% opacity. And maybe when she goes to grab it, well, well, actually, let's have her hand covered up. We'll have it keep glowing until she puts her hand over. So right there, it'll gradually turn on from here to here. So watch this. There we go. We want that radius spread out a little bit more. Threshold down a little bit more. There we go. We're getting a little bit more kind of glowy effect there. Oh, I'm liking that. And then we're going to have her hand. When her hand goes over, see, we still got the amulet over her hand there, the glow. So I'm going to, uh, we'll do this. We're going to go to the background. Going to duplicate it by hitting Command-D or Control-D on a PC. Put that on top. We're going to re rename this one Hand. And this only has to be a few frames, essentially. So what we can do here... What we can do here is select this layer and make an endpoint right where our hand covers, like right about there, we're going to have that layer turn on. I'm going to do Alt, left bracket, it puts an endpoint, and that layer turns on. And we can leave it on for the rest of the time. But let's go, uh, actually, we don't even need to. We can go right to right where this effect turns off and just do um, Option, right bracket, and turn it off. And then it goes back to the bottom layer. So right there, the hand is going to turn on just for that portion right there. So now, but right here, it just turns completely on. And now it just blocks the whole screen. So the amulet's behind that. So what we've got to do is rotoscope the fingers. So let's go to our pen tool. And we're going to make a mask over her fingers here. And I don't need to do the whole hand, just the part that's blocking the amulet. So let's just make it like right there. So we've cut out that little portion right here of her hand and now we're gonna let's just try a track mask see if that works if it doesn't we'll just it's only a few frames we can do it uh, manually so go to mask track mask here's our tracker let's do this one frame at a time oh, it seems to be tracking pretty well just adjust these frames here until it completely blocks it out manually adjust some of these and then track forward there we go. And that's as far as we need to do it. Then the layer turns off. So now it's completely blocking it. So now we just need to feather the edge a little bit. Let's go mask feather. Feather the edge slightly and let's shrink it a little bit. Go like uh, mask expansion negative two to eat into the hand a little bit. There we go. Let's take a look at that see how it looks. And there's our effect. Well, cool. Well, um, 
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post them below.